Potter is dead. <laughs> Learning how to do a handstand. Someone tell me why I am actually <laughs> into this. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's me. We are fighting for our life for natural light right now. So dark and gloomy outside today. And I hate starting my videos on dark days. But anyways, there's a water bottle on the floor behind me and where's my Kindle? I have to go get my Kindle one sec. <laughs> Where's my Kindle? Where's my... Oh, there's my Kindle. Found my Kindle. <laughs> okay, what are we doing today? Today we are reading fan fiction. Yes, you heard that correctly. We are going to be reading <laughs> fan fiction in today's video. And not only fan fiction, but we are reading the fan fiction, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> Just to give you some background, I have not read fan fiction in probably like 16 years, maybe longer, maybe like 18 years. <laughs> I remember reading some fan fiction during like the twilight days maybe, but like literally ever since then I have not touched fan fiction and I feel like it's been kind of like brought up to my attention again just because I've been seeing a lot of people read very specific fan fiction. There was also some very recent news about like people were scared that fan fiction was going to like shut down forever like AO3 was going to shut down which I think they talk about all the time but it like never happens. So basically if you have not heard the news or like the book talk gossip there were rumors that AO3 was going to shut down because a lot of people were buying binded copies of this particular fan fiction and that's illegal. <laughs> it's not morally correct. It's just not. You shouldn't do it. Don't pay for fan fiction. Fan fiction should be free. It's illegal to sell fan fiction. People were selling fan fiction, which is why AO3, which is the website where you read fan fiction, there were rumors it was going to shut down, but it didn't shut down and I'm rambling. But the said fan fiction that everyone was like purchasing was called Manacled. And I have it here on my Kindle and we're gonna read it. <laughs> if you don't know what Manacled is, if you have not heard of this, this is probably like the most talked about fan fiction of all time maybe, or at least like the most talked about fan fiction in the Harry Potter universe. I wrote down a couple of fun facts about this fan fiction. I don't know about the plot, but all I know about it is that it's like a Draymione? Fan fiction? Is that how you say their ship name? Like Draco Malfoy and Hermione Granger? Yes. This is a Draco Malfoy and Hermione Granger fan fiction. It's 370,515 words long, which is double the length of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. People have calculated how many pages that many words would be, and the number online that I found is it's 876 pages long. <laughs> and it also has a 4.65 rating on Goodreads. So we're gonna read it. I have heard that this fan fiction has changed people's lives. I don't know, I'm so skeptical because first of all, I'm not really like a fan fiction reader. I just have a feeling that like, I'm such a Harry Potter fan, you know? And I feel like just knowing in my head, like the fact that I know in my head that this is not canon is going to like, put a damper on my experience while reading this. Like even if it's really good, I feel like I'm just gonna be like, but guys, it's not real. Like it's not canon. So I'm not gonna like accept it, but who knows? I've gotten so curious and it's just time for me to read it. So Manacled by Sen Lin Yu. I'm gonna read my first fan fiction. <laughs> there is, I noticed, there's like a summary of what happened. So I'm just gonna read it with you now. We're gonna read it together, okay? So this is the summary. This is no spoilers. Okay, Harry Potter. <laughs> I can't. Okay, okay. Harry Potter is dead. <laughs> Oh no, okay. I guess that's the world we're in. In the aftermath of the war, in order to strengthen the might of the magical world, Voldemort enacts a repopulation effort. Hermione Granger has an order secret, lost but hidden in her mind. So she is sent as an enslaved surrogate to the High Reeve until her mind can be cracked. So does this take place like right after the Deathly Hallows, but it's like an alternate universe where like Voldemort killed Harry? 
like Voldemort wand. And then we have some sort of like a Handmaid's Tale situation going on. And what is a high reeve? <laughs> so many questions. Okay, that's the journey we're gonna go on in this video. I think also I have decided that like, I'm gonna make this video not a spoiler free reading vlog, just because I feel like if I'm reading just this one fan fiction in this video, it'll be more like fun and exciting and interesting to watch if I am actually able to talk about the events I'm reacting to, you know what I mean? So if you have not read Manacled and if you plan to read Manacled, I'm just gonna put like one spoiler free review at the end of this video that you can carefully skip to and just watch that part if you just wanna know my final thoughts without any spoilers. But if you have read Manacled or you just like know that you will never read Manacled, you don't care to, then keep watching this video. But yeah, I'm not gonna start reading right now, I don't think we're about to go out. But once I start actually reading, I will catch up with you guys. <laughs> Mmm, looks good for a Harry Potter fan fiction. I don't think any of these are Harry Potter. No, do you like this one? Is that your influencer wiggle? Yeah. Wait, how, how do you do it? Like this? Yeah. <laughs> not like back in the like corner. Yeah, but not so like violent. I just opened it, the first line is Hermione has long given up hope of seeing in the darkness. <laughs> it's like so weird reading, like, name Hermione. Hermione's in like jail, okay? Whoa. And she's do <laughs> she's like bored and she like doesn't know what to do. So she's like reciting like potions, like normal stuff in her head. But then she's also <laughs> doing cartwheels and learning how to do a handstand and push-ups and burpees. I don't know why. It's just like the thought of like Hermione just like working out. Wearing some like <laughs> she's, pants. she's like wearing like Lululemon. Yeah. She's wearing like Gymshark and she's like doing like a Chloe Ting workout. <laughs> Protein powder. I don't know why that's so funny. This is like the third page of the book. <laughs> Get yourself together, Jamie. Okay guys, it's a little later in the day. <laughs> I've read 16% of this so far, which I think is, it's definitely over a hundred pages. What the heck is going on, okay? I got over my giggles that I was having at the beginning of the book. I don't know, it just felt so bizarre reading about these Harry Potter characters, but like not in a Harry Potter way. There's just something so different about the language, the writing style, even the world that we're in, it doesn't, feel like J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter. Like it it doesn't feel like the same universe at all, but it's just like you have these characters and you know their backstory, or at least most of it, like some of it seems to be different, but like you know the general idea of who everyone is and like who are the good guys and who are the bad guys, but they're set in this world that is just like so different. Like it just doesn't feel the same. And it could be the way that everything's written. Like, as I said, like the descriptors, the writing style, like it doesn't feel like a Harry Potter book. I was having a little trouble at the beginning diving into into it because it felt so different. I couldn't take it seriously. Like the second I read about Hermione doing like push-ups and burpees or whatever, I was just like, it took me out. Like I, I absolutely couldn't. <laughs> also just feels weird reading something in the Harry Potter universe, but not in Harry's POV because every single Harry Potter book, I think other than like maybe one chapter or something was in Harry's POV. So we've never really seen the world from anyone else's POV and it just seems very strange to be in someone else's head. I feel like I'm slowly settling into the story, but as I'm settling in, the more detached from like real Harry Potter it is. Like in my mind, this is not even Harry Potter. This is just some other like dark fantasy romance book. Like it's not even Harry Potter. <laughs> it's something else entirely. It's a completely different genre. It's a completely different book, completely different world. Yeah, I don't know. It's 
my mind is just kind of breaking a little reading it, but I was correct. It literally is Handmaid's Tale crossover with Harry Potter to the uniforms that they make the handmaids wear. We have Hermione, who's like super fit now. <laughs> she hasn't had access to any of her magic because she has these like cuffs on that limit her magic. She's like basically the only person left alive out of like anyone who was important on like the good side just like the only one left everyone else is like dead <laughs> i knew harry was gonna be dead but i didn't expect like every person in the order was going to be dead so they're gone we're not gonna see them a little upset about that hermione's been forced into this handmaid's tale situation where she is actually paired with malfoy who is the high reeve his powers completely just <laughs> He's just super powerful right now and he's also like really chiseled and like good looking. <laughs> Really, really interesting experience. One thing I am enjoying though is that once in a while we'll have some like fan art in this book and like it's kind of making the experience a little more fun because you get some visuals of like what's going on. Didn't really know what to expect going into this, but like, I don't know. I've just heard so many good things about this fan fiction and I feel like I just at the moment cannot take it seriously. There's also just like so many differences in the magic as well. Like I feel like it's not the same the way magic works and like the spells. I don't know. There's so many differences, but we're going to soldier on. We're going to continue reading it and we're going to see if I finally get like what everyone is raving about <laughs> in this book. But that's my update. <laughs> we're going to keep reading. Hi guys, it's the next morning. I'm speaking British now <laughs> because I'm reading Harry Potter. Okay, manacled, how are we doing? I am at 30%. Wow, I read a lot. So hold on, how much is 30% in terms of pages? 262 pages <laughs> yesterday. In general, again, I like, I don't read fan fictions, but I feel like I'm reading this so quick because I already know who like everyone is. There's no world building that needs to be done. Like, you know everyone, you know their backstory, you know the magic system, you know the world, you know, everything so you just read it like you just go with it i'm at the part where we've gone back in time we're like starting to see things that happened that like are parts that hermione forgot did i even mention that when i was talking about this book last night this is like the whole memory loss trope thing where like when hermione was in prison she like partitioned off a part of her memory and then like obliviated herself maybe like just for that portion they're saying that she did it as like some sort of a coping mechanism but i think she did it on purpose i think she did it because she had some big secret night it's starting to like piece together but yeah now we've gone back to the past and we're kind of seeing more of what happened i could definitely see how it could be shorter i would prefer it to be shorter but there's a lot of parts where i'm like you could have just cut this out you could have just edited this out but there's probably no editing done because the fan fiction i'm gonna continue reading and maybe i will start to understand what everyone talks about like why everyone's so obsessed with this fan fiction i don't <laughs> i don't get it but i'm not a fan fiction reader so maybe that's why would you read a harry potter fan fiction I would. Really? Maybe one of the wackier ones. Do you know what this one's about? Basically, it's like a handmade still copycat almost, but in Harry Potter. So Harry died. Voldemort's like in power. The pure blood wizards like aren't able to populate anymore because something about their genes, like they have too much magic and it's like hard for them to have babies. Is there a Harry Hermione romance spinoff? Probably, but this is not. This, this is Hermione and Malfoy. Oh! Yeah, so Hermione's been paired with Malfoy. What do you think about that? What an idea. <laughs> would you read it? No, I don't think I'll read it. <laughs> so you'd prefer a, a Hermione and Harry fanfic? Um, I think that's like the most obvious. Really? No? No, they're like friends. Oh. There's nothing romantic between them. Harry, what about Harry Ron? <laughs> it's definitely Harry Malfoy. <laughs> Someone tell me why. I am actually <laughs> into this. <laughs> I don't know when it happened, you guys, but I was reading this yesterday and then all of a sudden I was enjoying it. <laughs> I'm at 63% in now. So I'm pretty like well into the story. We're on our way, but something has like switched inside me. Something has flopped. And for some reason, I'm really liking it. You guys are crooked. What the heck? Um. <laughs> I don't know if it's like I just got used to 
what was going on and the way things were written because I know at first I was really put out because the writing style was so different. It just like didn't feel like a Harry Potter book at all. But like right now I got used to it. Like my brain is fully accepting that this is happening and this is totally an alternate universe world that could have been. <laughs> I feel like once we got over the whole like Handmaid's Tale part because I just like, I really wasn't feeling that part. I think that part was way too long. I feel like that could have been like a third of the length. But once we like flipped back into our past timeline and started like seeing what actually happened to see like all of our characters still alive and like just seeing how they died started getting more believable to me and it started feeling more Harry Potter to me because it just felt more familiar. Like everyone was there, we were on this quest, like we were still working towards things. The story actually started to build and it's actually kind of good. <laughs> sure. Are there plot holes? Absolutely. Are there like holes in the magic system? Yes. I feel like some of the characters are still like, they're not acting like their canon characters would. And that was hard for me to accept at first. Like for example, the golden trio would never treat each other the way they are in here. Ron, Harry, Hermione, like they would never just like split up like that. They would never treat Hermione this way. Canonically. Canonically? Canonly? Can- Canly? You know what I mean. Their canon characters would never just like ditch Hermione. Like Harry and Ron would not. But I don't know. I'm- I'm liking it. I'm like completely immersed and invested in it now. I'm just like, I need to find out what happened, how we got from this point to like our future timeline to where we're in the Handmaid's Tale land. Like I just need to know how things are connecting and we have connected a couple things already and I feel like this author of this fan fiction has done a really good job actually at connecting things. I'm also just like, who had the time? to do this, to like write a literal fully fledged book as a fan fiction that's like longer than any other Harry Potter book, just publishes it for free. Like who has the time for this? I certainly do not, but I have the time to read it. Also the entire like Hermione and Malfoy romance thing, I know a lot of people ship them. And I honestly, like before reading this, I was like, there's no way, there's no way way like Hermione and Malfoy would never and I feel like those ships started because of Emma Watson and Tom Felton like having secret crushes for each other and just seeing their like natural offstage chemistry. I feel like that's what created a lot of the Dremione ships to begin with but while I was reading this I was like no like that that would not happen and I was so like not into like seeing how they were gonna come together but then for some reason the enemy started lovering. <laughs> And now I'm like fully in this fandom and <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm having an identity crisis because I've always just been such like a Harry Potter purist and I never thought I would be into something like this, but something about it is doing it for me. I don't know, it's like drawing me in, but I'm just trucking through this so quickly. <sighs> Manacled, it's getting to me. <laughs> I see it in your eyes. Yeah, I can read the signs. Topsy loves Malfoy. <laughs> Why is this getting me emotional? Malfoy's house elf doesn't want to leave him. <laughs> We're 85% of the way in. I feel like things are gonna get crazy and I feel like things are gonna get emotional. I feel like I've been having anxiety like reading the past 20% of the book, like from the 65% point. I feel like I've just been in a constant state of like, Ooh. <laughs> Reading this, oh my gosh. What do you think about that, Bobs? The two of us, we don't have to stop. He cut off his arm. Bobs! <laughs> he cut off his arm. Oh my goodness, I did it. <laughs> oh, that was a long one. My dishwasher is on right now, so I apologize if you can hear it. But I just finished. Manacled, Ooh, I'm like sweating. <laughs> there was something about that like last escape scene that was a little underwhelming to be honest. Like Voldemort didn't even show up. <laughs> I'm just gonna interrupt myself 
here because my brain was just so scattered yesterday evening when I finished Manacled that I just, I feel like I couldn't get any of my thoughts together. So I'm just interrupting myself here and it's the next day and I'm gonna talk to you about my final thoughts now that my like head is back on. So final thoughts. <laughs> First foray into adult fan fiction. First of all, I'm gonna talk about my observations that I think are like neutral. I don't think they're like good or bad. The first thing I definitely have to point out and talk about is that this did not really feel like Harry Potter at all. And I mentioned this earlier in the video, but it was just completely different. The writing style was very different. It was also obviously written very much more adult versus like, what would you classify Harry Potter as like YA? I think it started as middle grade, went to YA, and then maybe got a little bit more adult near the end when things got a bit more dark, but Manacled was very much adult, like had a lot of darker themes. We got a lot more like detail on like kind of the dirty gore that was happening, more like adult, darker meaning to like war and what was going on. Definitely more adult. The writing style was obviously very different. It was not JK <laughs> writing this. So it just felt very different in terms of the writing style, in terms of the descriptors that were used. We're also not in Harry's POV, which we don't really get in like the canon Harry Potter series. Like basically, everything is from Harry's POV. We might have gotten like a few chapters randomly, but like not really, like 99.9% .9 of canon Harry Potter is from Harry's POV only. And we definitely did not get any of Hermione's POV, which is what manacled was, like 100% of manacled was. <laughs> so that felt really strange at first, but I will say I did get used to it. So that's why I'm calling this like a neutral observation about manacle. <laughs> and then for my like, bad or like negative observations. Let's start with those first before we get to the good, just cause it's always nice to end on a good note, but the world and magic system in Manacle just felt so different. And I feel like that took away from the experience a little bit because I'm such like a Harry Potter purist. I'm like, if there's any like flaw in the magic system or if something feels different, it just doesn't feel correct to me. So I was getting a little picky about that while I was reading. This fan fiction is also like so incredibly long. I feel like honestly, I would have enjoyed the journey and the experience if it was a bit shorter. I think the first 30% when we were like all in the Handmaid's Tale portion of the book, that part was just so unbelievably long. And I get that we had to establish where we were, but it just stretched on for way too long. And we had like similar events happening over and over and over again, like pushing the same point. I feel like a lot of those chapters could have been just cut out. I do understand it's fan fiction. So I'm pretty sure like this fan fiction was posted like chapter by chapter as the writer was writing the chapters. So I get that like no editing was done, but I just feel like some of those chapters maybe didn't have to be written or could have been condensed into like shorter chapters or, or less chapters. The bulk of the story, like when we got flashback scenes to like what happened and we started connecting things back to canon Harry Potter and then started to like fill in the gaps of like what happened, what's changed. I really did enjoy that part. And I honestly didn't feel like that part was dragging on too much, maybe a little bit, but I was enjoying the story enough that I was like fully immersed in it. And then the ending, first of all, the ending was wildly underwhelming for me. I feel like all the buildup and everything we were working towards Towards the way things ended wasn't what I expected and it wasn't as satisfying or like heart-wrenching of an ending that I wanted. Like I wanted a really big dramatic final scene. I wanted to like be in tears. I wanted this fan fiction to make me cry because I've just heard like everyone saying like Manacled broke me and I'm like, I feel like I haven't been broken yet. <laughs> Maybe my tolerance is like too high at this point after reading a lot of books, but then after like the big final climax scene or whatever, we had like really, really long epilogues. I think we had like two or three epilogues. I can't remember. Yesterday was a blur, but a hundred pages of epilogue and it just stretched on for so long that I was like, this could have been all trimmed down into like a nice, like maximum 10 page epilogue or something like that. But I just feel like things dragged on a lot, but maybe that's just the nature of fan fiction and how it's written. But I will say the ending definitely like lost my interest. And I will be quite honest, I was skimming quite a bit of that ending, <laughs> I apologize. But I think that was most of my like negative thoughts on the fan fiction, like definitely plot holes and stuff. But you know what, I'm like, overlooking those for the most part because I do understand it's fan fiction. But in terms of things I found good about Manacled and things I liked about it, first of all, we had so many parallels to like canon events that happened in the real story that I think the author really tied in beautifully into this like alternate 
dimension story. Just like certain things that happen, like big events that happened in canon Harry Potter in books six to seven happened in Manacled, but in kind of a different context or in kind of a different way. Certain like very specific events, scenes, deaths, quotes that were said, like little moments, very specific moments happened in Manacled that were taken from the canon series, but like twisted in another way. So we got it in a different context in Manacled. And I found that really cool to see like these things happening because of different reasons, like triggered by different events. And I thought that was really well done. So like, Kudos to the author for doing that. That was really, really cleverly done. I did talk about how the story dragged on, but I think in terms of the structure and like beginning, middle and end and like how things were happening, Manacled was really like well-structured. I didn't expect like such a well, fully thought out structured story. I wasn't expecting that going into fan fiction. I thought things would be a lot more like disjointed and like just kind of for fun. And while there were a few plot holes, I think like overall the story was really good and it was believable enough that I was able to like stay captivated. Another good thing that I liked about Manacled is that the enemies definitely lovered. I was really skeptical going into this because I just, Draymine, I get that we all want enemies to love her and we're all in our enemies to lovers phase, but I just like never really understood the Draco and Hermione thing, but like, I'm kind of convinced after reading this. And then just like for one more final thought, the smut was really well done. And like, this is coming from someone who is not a smut fan. Like these days I prefer fade to black romances, closed door, maybe just like a little bit of smut to get that like feeling of satisfaction after a long time of yearning. But like in terms of like detailed smut, I generally don't like it these days. And I found Manacle to have some like pretty good smut. <laughs> I think it's because it wasn't like so detailed, like we got enough, but like not too many details that I was just like disgusted and cringing. <laughs> and then also like the smut dialogue was done better than honestly a lot of like real, like genuine published romance books. So I thought the smut here was done very well. So good job because I don't like smut. But yeah, those were my thoughts about Manacled. I don't think I have any more thoughts. I probably do, but I can't think of them right now. But that was my first foray into fan fiction. I overall enjoyed the journey. I definitely got my giggles out at the beginning and then I fully got immersed into the story. And the ending, as I said, was a little disappointing. But overall, I think that was pretty good. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna give it a star rating like out of five just because like I don't know how to rate fan fiction because I haven't read much of it and I don't have experience with it. I don't know like how I'm supposed to rate it and I don't want to rate a fan fiction as I would a real book. So yeah, will I be going on with fan fiction at this point? Probably not. <laughs> Like I have a lot of like books on my shelf that I want to get to and I just, I don't feel the need or like the urge to like continue with fan fiction at this moment, but who knows if another fan fiction shows up one day and it sounds really interesting to me and it's about like a topic or a book that I'm really into, like maybe. <laughs> I definitely think having the Kindle helps with reading fan fiction because I don't think I could just like scroll on my computer or phone like on AO3, like reading it that way. But the fact that I was able to download it onto my Kindle and it seemed more like a real book. It made the experience quite enjoyable actually. So anyways, I'm going to leave you guys here for now. I hope you enjoyed my fan fiction experience. If you did like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you don't know what to comment down below, let me know if you've ever read fan fiction and what your favorite is. <laughs> if you like me, subscribe, do that bell thing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!